is up guys it is joe here from joe talks wrestling and welcome back to another wwe fantasy booking video the man the face of the wwe john cena done everything there is to do in the wwe mr money in the bank two-time royal rumble winner 16-time world champion former united states champion Tag Team Champion, Slammy Award winner, you name any accomplishment you can do in WWE, Cena has done it. Except for one. The Intercontinental Championship. Let's get right into it. Me, booking John Cena's first ever Intercontinental Championship run. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so starting things off, all of the events are going to be taking place from roughly now uh, all the way till WrestleMania. This is when I would have it play out. Uh, bearing in mind, this isn't John Cena's championship win I'm booking, it's his run. So, right, where do I start? This one's probably going to annoy a lot of you. Anyway, so I am going to have Roman Reigns be the current Intercontinental Champion, beating Shinsuke Nakamura. If you guys um, weren't familiar, this match actually was meant to take place on SmackDown a few weeks ago, but it was turned into a tag team match. Now, the reason I'm doing this is at the time of this recording, The Fiend and Brock Lesnar are both on SmackDown. Um, they are both the top guys. Lesnar just quit SmackDown this week. I don't know if that means The Fiend is coming over to SmackDown and Lesnar's going over to Raw or whatever, but put it this way, both of those talents are pretty much pay-per-view exclusive, I guess you could say. We haven't seen The Fiend compete on Raw. We've seen him on Raw, obviously, but we haven't seen him compete. And Lesnar, we all know how he works. Um, so... SmackDown's main guy, the guy at the end of the sh intro show package, is Roman Reigns. So why don't you give Roman the top mid-card championship, and just like Raw had to do with the Intercontinental Championship last year when Lesnar was away, make the IC Championship literally the main championship on the show. Make it mean something again, because as much as I love Shinsuke Nakamura, his run has done nothing for the title. But at the same time, the title has done nothing for him. So the Intercontinental Championship is the workhorse championship. It's given to the hardest working guy in the company. That's what it was meant to be back in the day. So give it to Roman Reigns. And then what we're going to have to do is either at the start of January or at the end of December, we'll have Cena come back to SmackDown. Uh, he'll be a free agent still. He'll be booked as free agent John Cena. So he'll appear on Raw and SmackDown. Uh, but he will be on SmackDown um, periodically. So... He essentially says, you beat me, Roman Reigns, at No Mercy 2017. I want a rematch for the Intercontinental Championship, the one title that has eluded me my entire career. I want it one-on-one, -on -one, the face versus the guy that thinks he's the face. Roman Reigns versus John Cena, one-on-one -on -one at the Royal Rumble. Roman Reigns accepts, John Cena beats him. Just like that, well, obviously we'll have an actual, like, you know, good match between these two. We saw at No Mercy, these two can tear the house down. So, John Cena picks up his first WWE Intercontinental Championship at the Royal Rumble. Then what? Like I previously mentioned, he is still a free agent, meaning he is free to appear on Raw and SmackDown. So, we do the John Cena Intercontinental Championship Open Challenge. John Cena elevated the US title back in 2015 with this, and he's going to elevate the Intercontinental Championship with it once again. So, he's a free agent. He can go across the brands. Oh my God, it just hit me. All of the brands. NXT's the third brand. Okay, we're, we're mixing things up even more here, guys. So Cena can have matches. He'll be on Raw, SmackDown, and NXT each and every week up until WrestleMania just to show that he means business. He wants to do the IC Open Challenge with everyone, anyone and everyone, to prove that he deserves to be the Intercontinental Champ. We can see matches John Cena versus Johnny Gargano, John Cena versus Adam Cole, John Cena versus EC3, John Cena versus Elias, John Cena versus Ali, John Cena versus Ricochet. All of these matches we've wanted to see for all of these years, we can finally have happen. Every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Now, don't get me wrong, Cena is going to be working his ass off this these like three months between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, but it will all be clear why he's doing it very shortly. So, 
This happens, obviously, every week Cena retains, but he's tearing the house down with these guys over and over and over again. Elimination Chamber just does another open challenge. Um, you know, all the pay-per-views, Fastlane, another open challenge, until we get to the build for WrestleMania. So Cena's beaten all of these stars, and he's not doing it in a burying way, he's doing it in an elevating way to make people think, bloody hell, he's a really good wrestler. John Cena just helped him. Um, and... We're going to get to, just before WrestleMania, three weeks before maybe, we want it pretty last minute. And Cena's going to come out, everyone's going to be thinking, right, he's doing another open challenge. And he's going to say, I'm not doing an open challenge here tonight, guys. Because just like a couple of years ago, I don't have a WrestleMania opponent. I need a WrestleMania opponent. But I have beaten everyone that has stood up and faced me. Until Randy Orton's music hits. Now I know a lot of you are going to be thinking, oh, another Cena Orton feud. But listen, listen, hear me out. Orton comes down to the ring. These two have promos every now and then. He goes, you haven't beaten me in a very, very long time, John. And I haven't held that Intercontinental Championship in a very, very long time. So I am hungry. I want the championship. Now, over the weeks, obviously, building up to WrestleMania, things get said, things happen. But in the end, both men turn around. And just to show that this is the Workhorse Championship, they both make an agreement which sets the wrestling world on fire. We both want the Intercontinental Championship that bad that if we lose... The loser has to retire from WWE indefinitely. No more. Shawn Michaels style. Street versus career. Title versus career. Cena versus Orton. One last time for the Intercontinental Championship. The loser retires. This is major. Two of the WWE's biggest stars from the 2010s. Literally, these guys have ruled this place for nearly two decades. And at WrestleMania 36 would be the end of that. One man would have to leave for good. So we get to WrestleMania 36. Orton comes out how he normally does. You know, nothing fancy for Orton. Normal entrance, you know, wearing his normal attire. Cena, however, sporting all white and gold, baby. He comes out... New white armbands, new white t-shirt that says, you know, uh, the champ is here with the Intercontinental title. Uh, same what he did with the US and WWE Championships when he won them not too long back. Uh, he's wearing his black shorts. You know, he's just wearing an Intercontinental Championship based attire, but pretty much. Um, he's coming out. He's got this massive entrance. You know how Cena's WrestleMania entrances are, but this one's going to blow them all out of the water. We've got loads. We've got other Cena's. We've got a live band. Um, but, you know, hopefully it's a good live band. Half the live performances have been pretty mediocre. But, yeah, Cena comes out, does his salute, runs down to the ring, and it's time. This could literally be the main event of the show. And that's the best thing. WWE need viewers. And although they're going to sacrifice one of their biggest talents, viewers from past present and future are going to tune in. That guy that stopped watching when the Ruthless Aggression Era started because he hated John Cena is going to think, holy crap, his career's on the line. I'm going to watch. Those kids you went to school with that grew out of wrestling in primary school or elementary school are going to think, holy crap, when I was a kid, I loved John Cena. This could be the end of him. Put this on the main event. Put the Intercontinental Championship in the main event of WrestleMania. Although the WWE Championship and the Universal Championship are the world titles, we've seen that they don't need to main event Mania anymore. Look at last year with the women. They tore the house down and that was for the women's championships. So give the IC title a shot. Put it in the main event of WrestleMania. The crowd is going crazy. We've got Randy versus Cena one last time facing off one on one in the ring, and we are going to have a slobber knocker of a match. We're seeing everything old moves, 
new moves, you name it. They're pulling out all the old classics. Randy Orton gonna hit his old like um, like Zack Attack sort of move. You know the one where he like I can't remember what he used to call it, uh, but he used to like hook their leg and twist it. Um, all stuff like that. Cena's gonna hit the FU, uh, the AA. He's gonna hit the STF. We're gonna see everything. He's gonna hit that old like back suplex spinning power bomb that he used to do. Anything these guys have done in their matches before, they will do. Heck, even throw in the springboard stunner, and Randy Orton is especially going to hit the punt kick. Vince, it is okay to do. You unban the stomp, we can unban the punt kick, but just for this night only. Randy's been teasing it on TV for years, but he's finally going to hit it. And I'm telling you now, this match is going to be on your edge of the seat the whole time. These two will be pinning each other and kicking out at two and way too late. Literally, everyone's going to be thinking that was a three, but he kicked out insane. I, I'm literally talking one, two, kick out. Like, you know, it's going to be crazy. But in the end, it's going to come down to John Cena standing there. RKO connects. One, two, kick out the Super Cena way, of course he does. So Randy Orton's going to back up to the corner. Punt kick. One, two, no. So Orton's doing what he used to do. He's going crazy. He's, you know, he's kicking the ropes. He's screaming at the referee. That was three. You know, he Orton's going ballistic in the ring. Until Cena gets up. He's on his knees. He's, he's selling like crazy. He's all over the place. And we see a similar Ric Flair thing. Cena's going to look at Orton while he's down and out. You can't see me. Bang! RKO. One, two, three. Randy Orton wins the Intercontinental Championship. John Cena retires from WWE permanently. We'll have a big round of applause. Cena's going to be in the ring crying. Uh, Orton's not going to be sadistic and, you know, leave him like Orton's going to sort of sh like not shake his hand, but, you know, he'll he'll be looking at Orton, like Cena while he's down and hold the title. He'll hold it up in the air. He'll sort of look down on him. Cena's like they've made eye contact. Orton will sort of nod in respect, get out the ring, go down. Cena's going to, you know, one last time do, 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 holds his hands up. You know, everyone, those women, children, heck, grown men are going to be crying. Uh, it's going to be absolutely crazy. But in the end, John Cena's run with the WWE finally comes to its conclusion. Cena can then go back to Hollywood and do what he wants to do. Obviously, that's where his money is nowadays. That's where his loyalties lie. I mean, he can... Although he's always said, you know, he's not going to be The Rock and he's not going to do Hollywood. Realistically, guys, you go where the money's at. That's how the real world works. You know, if, if John Cena's being... If, although it's not this simple, if Vince was going to pay John Cena for a year uh, to do a one whole year, live shows, everything, $1 million, uh, and then Hollywood are going to pay him $2 million to do a film for like six months, Cena's going to pick the film. It's just how it is. You know, he's not old by any means, but he's, you know, his body's, it's going to start like, you know, he'll feel it. He's feeling it now. So he's going to hang it up while he can still put on a brilliant match. And it's going to be Cena versus Orton at Mania with Cena finally retiring. But what do you guys think? I think that would be a perfect conclusion. Two guys that came in at the same time are going to go out. Uh, obviously, that pretty much leaves Orton, Mysterio, and if Taker's still around at that point, them. Orton, Mysterio, Triple H, they're probably the three childhoods left. We've already seen Batista go, uh, Cena, obviously. And... Although it would be very sad for me to watch if it actually happened, I think it is a picture-perfect ending for John Cena's career. But anyways, that was my booking. Let me know how you would book it in the comment section down below. Please be sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. You guys have been awesome. Stay tuned for more wrestling content. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.